All right, ELD with Brainstorm MTG. This is some more legacy from Scholars Games. This time, Kiefer's Red Prison versus Cow Cow's Death and Taxes. Cow Cow coming off of a top eight. Actually, I believe he split in the finals, perhaps, of the Battlegrounds Dual Land Tournament. Uh, that is with Death and Taxes as well. He has been running this list for a while. And Kiefer, of course, looking to get three mana on the first turn. Jamming a Blood Moon is his main plan. Not as amazing versus Death and Taxes, but they do have a lot of utility lands. Rashad and Port, Caracas, Wasteland. They don't generally run a Gino, uh, Igiano Castle. There's a white, like, Betrayer's Land. Uh, but he is going to still jam that here, trying to keep Cow Cow off of white mana. And it looks like he actually is so far. Uh, Cow Cow has a Aether Vial, uh, so he may not need white mana eventually. Uh, but there is a new Innistrad card, which I should know. I've already played against it. It is 2-3 for a 3 mana uh, guy that when he attacks, you put two one ones into play attacking. So he's essentially going to hit for 4, and then 6, and then 8, and now 0. So Swords to Plowshares gets him out of there. Cow Cow finding the basic planes to unlock some of his white spells. Now we have Umazawa's Jite as well. And into a morph. Uh, so Jite facing down what is Zoetic Cavern face down. And will Cow Cow be able to get something on board to pick up that Jit and start swinging? And it looks like another Swords. Unable to flip Zoetic Cavern face up. And there's the Thalia and the Equip. Red Prison playing briskly here. Thalia holding Jit. Blood Moon really not ideal here. And there is another creature, Magus of the Moon. And he is just fodder for those Jit counters at this point. Thalia's first strike and allow her to walk right on past Kiefer taking two and you've got to imagine it's worthwhile to get that Magus out of here but Cow Cow may be a little more reserved it's not really that dangerous to let him stick around and the only reason you'd be afraid here is split second cards Something like a Sudden Shock would be problematic as it would actually get Thalia out of there without allowing you to save her. And Stoneforge is going to just end that game right there. Uh, so turn one Blood Moon definitely not going to be the best versus Death and Taxes. And Kiefer moving on to game two. During the shuffling, I'd like to thank Scholars Games. Uh, this was filmed on our Wednesday Night Legacy series. Every Wednesday at 7.30, uh, we play four rounds of Legacy. Stream it to BrainstormMTG at twitch.tv. And we also then archive it here on YouTube uh, now with commentary. Uh, new microphone set up here this week. Definitely want to hear everybody's thoughts on that. Hopefully it sounds a lot better than last week's coverage. And Cow Cow has played this matchup uh, many times before. Kiefer very often playing this red prison deck. Uh, there are times where he also adds white as well. He's done a lot of brewing in this general space, uh, but the cards you most likely are going to see with him are Chalice of the Void and the Blood Moon effects, both Blood Moon and and Magus of the Moon. Uh, not really excited by the printing of Blood Sun. Not as good in this type of deck as it is perhaps in uh, Kenton's sneak attack build that he's been bringing around to Scholars. He also split in the finals of the Battlegrounds Dual Land Tournament. So having said that, it's actually kind of neat that the... Let's see... 
I think it was a blue deck and the mono red deck. I'm not sure which one actually made it. It was either Cow Cow or Kenton in the finals. Either way, it was not two blue decks in the finals of that tournament, uh, which is nice to see the non-blue decks also performing. Death and Taxes is, of course, a pretty substantial portion of the meta. And you got to imagine it's only going to pick up from here with the reprints in Masters 25. We have both Rashad and Port and Thalia in that set. And both of those cards were some of the more expensive in the deck. Certainly Rashad and Port, the most expensive. This is a new commentary, so as I said before, any any comments at all about uh, how you'd like to see the coverage improve, feel free to leave them in the comments below or message me uh, ELD at Brainstorm MTG. You can message me on the Brainstorm MTG Facebook page. Lots of ways to get in touch with me. And we're about six minutes in here, and we're going to see what Cow Cow can do against this Blood Moon deck and also see if Keeper's Prison deck can find a way to lock out or slow down Death and Taxes. Being on the play here, Chalice at 1, still a strong play versus Death and Taxes. Getting rid of Swords to Plowshares, Aether Vile, Mother of Runes. Probably Path to Exile if that's coming in. Aether Vial could be part of a balanced breakfast there in terms of stopping Death and Taxes from casting spells that would allow Blood Moon to potentially bottleneck the mana, but it is so hard or so rare for Death and Taxes to not draw the requisite planes in order to actually cast their spells. Many of them only require one white. And there we go, Magus into... The Halimar, whatever his name is. Let's see if he can stick around this time. And it looks like we will see an activation this time, or a trigger, I should say. And finally, we get to see it in action. So four damage coming in right off the bat. Now this guy is in contrast to the Goblin Rabble Master. And he is a 2-3, so he's actually going to be able to swing right past Thalia. And it looks like this is exactly why Kiefer sleeves this card up. Uh, blocking one of those tokens. But he is generating some advantage right now. And just blasting past what is usually an excellent defender in Thalia. And Zoetic Cavern adding to the beatings here, coming in face down. Kiefer really coming out swinging here. Cow Cow going to need to stabilize. And looks like a wasteland. So no moon effect. And Stoneforge into Batter Skull. And will Batter Skull close this out, or will Kiefer have an answer? Swinging on out again. Five tokens generated so far. Zoetic Cavern likely to be blocked. The other option is a double block on the token generator. And instead, we've got a Zoetic Cavern dying here, six, uh, seven coming through, uh, down to seven. So outside of Fiery Confluence range. And Batter Skull will put an end to these shenanigans.
batter skull is going to stop that attack step even getting up to four more uh, even getting two more tokens for a total of four really not going to be enough blood moon doing very little here three basic planes on the other side that is keeping the city of traders around but this is a huge swing it looks like cow cow is going to successfully stabilize here Kiefer is going to need to have a braid or some instant speed artifact destruction in his hand. If Cow Cow untaps, this may be the game. He's got the untap. If Kiefer did have that artifact destruction, he would have been able to fearlessly swing in the previous turn. And Umazawa's Jite. And that germ is heavily equipped at this point. We've got two counters on Jite. And this game should still be wrapped up for Cow Cow. He'll be able to pick up and put down that batter skull if necessary. He can actually go ahead and equip it if he likes. Fal, you're going to be able to block. And actually not even taking uh, perhaps the, the most obvious line there of blocking with Thalia and then shooting down the token generator. That would have been my line of choice there. And Thalia now picking up and turning sideways with Vigilance, of course. So six first strike. And the next turn, Jite will be able to go over this game, feeling very out of reach. Simeon Spirit Guide shown that is not going to dig him out of it, nor with the Magus of the Moon on top of that deck. Uh, so there we go. Death and Tax is able to stabilize against about as an aggressive start as Kiefer's deck is capable of, showing why it is one of the most popular decks in the format. Well, that is the end of this match, but we have more for you this week. This has been ELD with Brainstorm MTG. Thanks for watching.